the YouTube channel eventually. Okay, it's being recorded. Okay. That's a good idea because I know that for a beginners with brushes, this is a lot. And, uh, but I just want to cover territory to give you some idea of what is possible. Um, I use brushes, like oh, probably 80% of what I do in my work is using brushes. Hmm. Okay, so now we've covered blending modes. All right. Now, I just wanted to show you uh, a variety of brushes. I just put this back to normal here on the options bar. I'll show you some, uh, these are leaf brushes that I have made, but I've also made grunge brushes. When you learn how to, a lot of these are made out of cracks in pavement. For example, if I just take this one, that's just made from a crack on a cement wall out at Fort Rod Hill. So you can make brushes out of anything. It can be something as uh, specific as a leaf or something as kind of vague as, um, these are just like darker bits on concrete. But also I purchased brushes and I gave uh, you a list earlier. So um, here's some pretty cool ones. These are like branches. Some grasses. I'm using a tablet, by the way. Uh, so I've got my stylus. It's just like painting with a brush. All right. I, I did do these and I just will quickly make one of those. So in my grunge brushes here that I've made, I took a picture of, this is a picture of a white feather wreath, wreath at Christmas time in one of the hotels downtown. And when I apply it, it looks like this. So this, this just reminds me, when I have these brushes open, my set of brushes, anything that's really white will come through as a solid dense color. And anything that's faded will come through fainter. So if you look, if you can see my cursor here at 1239, there's some white spots which have come out darker and some light. And also every brush has a number attached to it. The bigger the number, the bigger the brush in its size, which of course you can change by alt right click and moving right or left. Let's just switch to the other color. I'll apply a little bit more of that. So just with a three taps of this brush that I've made, I already have some really interesting texture. And okay, let's get rid of that. Let's go back to the leaf brush. Let's go and pick a leaf brush. Leaves, my set of leaves. And we'll pick this brush here again. Now I'm going to turn this, this kind of boring brush. Let's change the color of that icky color and turn it into a scatter brush. So on the right hand side in your setup, it might be on the left hand side, but on the right hand side now, I've got all of my different sliders that I can pick from here. So I'm just going to click on shape dynamics. And this is a great place to just play around. Don't worry how things are gonna turn out. Just open a blank file, get yourself some new layers and start filling it up with just fun play with these brushes. So I'm going to move my um, size. If, I'm gonna watch down here to see what happens to my brush at the bottom. 
it's going to show me how it's going to transfer onto my paper. So I'm going to give my leaf brush a little bit of size jitter. So some brushes will go on bigger, some smaller. And let's see a bit of angle. You see when I move the angle, if you look at the bottom here, you can watch this change as I move the angle change. Uh, let's just go with that to start with. Now, a fun one, scattering. So if I watch down at the bottom here, as I move my scatter slider to the right, I get more separation between each of these leaves. So let's see what this looks like. So before, before I had done anything over here, I just had this single leaf applied. But now that I've set up an angle jitter, a size jitter and scattering, you see how beautifully this is going down. Then my other favorite one that I really use a lot is color dynamics. And here I can move my foreground background jitter slider over. This means that my foreground and background colors will both be used now when I apply a brush. Um, saturation, let's try a bit of saturation. Really just get in here and play with all of these and see what they do. So now when I apply, you can see I'm just getting more variation in color. If I flip my color chips over, I mean, these are beginning to look like leaves falling. So let's just, um, turn this off. I just want to show you an example of a piece I did where I, I used this very leaf brush and oh, get out of that seat. Um, I used this leaf brush in a scatter just like I showed you here. So that's just a very basic intro using the one leaf brush as an example. But these, this applies to any brush at all that you make or purchase or get for free. You can download lots of brushes for nothing. But more than the brush, so brush tool uses a brush, but other tools use brushes also. The clone stamp tool, the pattern stamp tool, the smudge tool, and there's other ones, but these are the ones I happen to use the most. So I'm just going to demonstrate them. So a very common place to use a brush is when using a mask. And most often people will use a soft, basic brush, but the truth is you can use any brush at all when you're working with a mask. And if you don't know what a mask is, it's a, it's, um, a way to add or subtract information from a layer. So I've brought in a model that I photographed and have selected here. And also, I've brought in here, I'll just turn her off. I made this previously, it's, I just call it an overlay, like a textured overlay. It's made up of a leaf brush, which I applied four or five times here, and some um, cracked porcelain something or other, I can't remember where I got that from. And I just put them together and made this overlay. So what I want to do is to show you 
how I can apply this overlay to this lady's skirt using a brush that is not a soft basic brush. So first of all, I am going to clip the overlay to the skirt. I don't have to clip it because I could have some of this design actually be on the outside of her skirt. But in this case, I'm going to click, which is Alt, and the cursor between the overlay layer and the figure and click once. And this marries this overlay to the figure. Now, I would like to apply that. Oh, I want to just put some of this onto the skirt, not all of it. So I'm going to apply a mask and I'm going to use a black mask which will hide everything on the overlay layer. So to apply a black mask, I hold down Alt, hit the mask icon at the bottom of the layer panel. Here's the mask now on this layer because it's black, it's hiding everything on this layer. So in order to reveal this, I am going to go to B, my brush tool. And I'm, ah, here's my leaf Well, Let's pick a different brush. What would happen if I use the leaf brush? Hmm, well, that's kind of cool. Hadn't planned on doing that, but there, I've just used my scatter leaf brush actually that I had stuck on the end of my cursor here to apply some of this overlay to the skirt. But I'll just, uh, uh, I'm just going to delete this layer mask and apply a new one, which is Alt Mask, gives me my black mask again. And I'm going to go to my brush sets and just pick another brush here. So now I have my brush on the end of my cursor. I'm using my Alt right click to go bigger or smaller. And um, because it's a black mask, I'm gonna use a white paint chip. I'll probably reduce my opacity. So all of those things that were on the very first screen, opacity, size, um, are all, um, can, can always be considered when I'm applying a brush. I've reduced my opacity, my size, and I'm, maybe I'll put it down a bit more and I'm just gonna start brushing. I'll just kind of brush on here. And you know, I don't really like it where these dark spots are. So I think I'm going to go to my black and just, Kind of reduce those a bit. So now I've added some texture, change back to white so I can add in, drop my opacity down a bit more, just brush a bit more on here. So if I turn this overlay on and off, there's the skirt with no, no texture and then the skirt with the overlay on top. So I've done this all with a brush, um, with a not a soft basic brush, just um, really any brush would work like the leaf that I actually started with. Uh, the other thing I can do is I could uh, also do a blending mode on my brush here. So we could try multiply, doesn't do too much. We could try overlay. There's hard light. In this case, I just like normal. So always consider uh, your blending modes when using brushes, either when you apply the brush over here in the options panel, or once you work, or the piece that you're working with that you've brushed in, you can apply a blending mode to that. Let's carry on. Hope I'm not going too fast. It's mm -hmm. great. Okay. So we've got 
a brush tool with a mask. Oh, actually, I just want to go back for a second. I'll just turn this off. And um, I wanted to go to, we'll just turn this other one off here, bring her back. And I put this texture on below here and using the move tool, laid it down to make it more like a floor. So what I wanna do here is I want to just brush a bit of floor in. So I'm not, so what I'm gonna do here again, is just apply another alt mask. Now I've hidden the floor and I have my texture, my opacity, we'll put it up a bit. My size is probably okay. And I'm just gonna brush in a little bit of flooring under her feet. So like that, another use of brushing a texture in using a random brush. Okay, so on to the next one, which is the clone stamp tool. So for years, I always used a soft basic brush with a clone stamp tool. And then I thought, geez, I could use any brush at all. So I started to do that. And it's really cool when you're not needing specific um, shape where the shape can be a bit free and fluid. So this is a piece that is definitely at the beginning of its stages. I'll show you the finished piece later. Uh, let's see here. Now I've actually put it in with its white background attached. So it's just a JPEG. It's not really my working folder, but I'm in. So my clone stamp is S on my keyboard, hit S. And I want to be in the clone stamp part of that, not the pattern stamp. So S in the clone stamp. And I'm going to zoom in here. Hold down my alt on my keyboard. Now my clone stamp is ready to pick up information. So let's just pick up a little bit of this shrub here. Okay, take this shrub and I'll just kind of brush it in up here. So I've just got my, my brush is just this one here. And it allows me to kind of have these fringy mm -hmm. edges. I could take some more and you know put a bit more over here. Let's just lower the opacity a bit more. I could take some of this. Now I'm on this bit of bark here on the bottom of the tree. Click on it and just wipe a bit down. Kind of like that. Maybe some of this down over here. So I'm brushing in with an odd shaped brush with my clone stamp. And if I back and I just kind of keep going here. So just a quick example of using a random brush with a clone stamp tool. Don't feel that you have to be married to the soft basic brush. Now, the most fun of, of all is, just let me get set up here, is using the pattern stamp tool. So here's directions here. If you want to write anything down, it's very simple on how to make your own pattern. So the pattern stamp tool is also S on the keyboard and it lives with the clone stamp. So it just has this little sign next to the stamp itself that indicates the pattern stamp tool. And on the, uh, okay, let's just see here. I have to drop this down. On the options bar, when the clones, when the pattern stamp is chosen on the option bar, there is a drop down menu for patterns. Now, your program comes with lot, if you're in CC especially, it has lots of built in patterns. I actually got rid of all the ones that came with mine. I didn't like them. And I have made or purchased 
uh, through creative couture, her brushes all come with patterns as well. And the beauty of using a pattern, if I just, let's see, I've just got my random brush on here still. So if I go and let's just choose her, let's see, I've got to move this over here too. Let's just choose this one. Oh, just a second here. I don't have that on there. So all those colors, I picked this blue pattern here. I'm, I'm brushing with not just one color. It's totally ignoring these paint chips over on the left here. Ignoring these. And it's using the colors out of these beautiful patterns. And the wonderful thing about these patterns is you can make your own. You can make a pattern out of some landscape that you're working on. Or if you're doing a composition of some sort and you have pattern, the colors already, put on to your layer panel here, then you can make a color, a pattern stamp out of those colors. So let me just demonstrate how this works here. We will. Okay, so regular or the rectangular marquee tool, which is here, the rectangular marquee tool. And you want your feathering to be zero. It will not work if you have anything above zero in the options bar on the feathering here. So make sure it is at zero pixels. Now, uh, I'm not so much into the darker colors. I'm just going to pick the lighter colors down here and I'm just going to open up a rectangle. Shape does not matter at all. If you want to move your rectangle around, just hit your space bar and you can make this like move it and bigger or smaller. As soon as I let go, I'm stuck with it. If I don't like it, just undo it and start again. So I'm going to pick that. Now, to make my pattern, I just go to edit, define pattern. Here's my pattern and it gives me, I've already made lots of patterns as you can see. So this is number 62. If I want to give it a different name, I can and say, okay. Now I go to my pattern stamp tool and I open this up. <laughs> okay. Hmm. How do I get rid of all the people down the side? Hide thumbnail video. Okay. Perfect. So at the bottom is my pattern. So here it is here at the very end. So now I'm going to highlight that pattern amongst, choose it from all these patterns. Let's turn this off. We'll go select, deselect to get rid of my selection line there. And let's go and pick a brush. So let's go and pick uh, some foliage. What is going on here? Huh. You believe this is frozen. Okay, um, Kevin. Kevin is not there right now. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I just put my, uh, I'll just go to my mouse instead. Uh, cancel. Oh, I'm here. I just uh, oh, had okay. myself muted. No, I'm okay. Yeah. I'm okay. I'm okay. I got out of it. Okay. 
All right. Um, um, is it a good time for a question? Uh, you know, I'm almost done. Okay. Let's keep going. Yeah. And then I'll take all the questions. I just want to make sure I get through this pattern stamp part and mm -hmm. that questions will be gratefully um, answered. So I was going to go and get a brush. We're going to pick some different brush. Let's go and get one of these foliage brushes here. And uh, we'll, we'll try this one here. So I'm in my pattern here, this one that I've chosen. I've chosen a foliage or a kind of a grassy brush. I'm holding down Alt, sliding right to make it a bit bigger so you can see it. And I think we'll put the opacity up to 100%. Oh, it's kind of prettier when it was down. Hmm. So I've used the grass, my pattern stamp, which I created. And if I were doing a work and I wanted to use these and I had these colors in it, I could make my pattern and then brush any, like any brush will work. Let's try a different brush. Let's go to, uh, let's go to a splatter thing. I don't have this one set up to scatter yet. So, but you can see every time I apply it, I have a different color. And, so I'm just gonna show you um, three pieces of work that I've done where I've used the pattern stamp quite extensively. So here's one here. I have some feather brushes and I use the feather brush here in a pattern stamp so I get the colors when I apply fly all through here. This is all done with pattern stamps and over here as well. I get um, applying different colors, just not one color. Uh, this one also where I've taken and applied some different leaf or um, grassy strands here with a pattern stamp. So you see how lovely the colors look. And I've chosen colors to blend in with the rest of the piece. And then this one, which is super obvious, I was using the, the grassy strands just like I did in the demo there. So this whole bottom part is applied with a pattern stamp brushes using different ones. So I'll take questions now. Okay, uh, Cindy was asking if you have a system for organizing the brushes that you've made uh, in terms of categories. Yes. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, so I, a few years back, I spent a lot of time making brushes. I just kind of got into it. And uh, so I, I decided I'd make grunge brushes. And I went out and collected photos and started making brushes. And honestly, um, I think with CC, it's a lot easier. You can create groups really easy. In CS6, it's quite difficult. Uh, I actually called Adobe to get some help and they had no idea what I was talking about. What I wanted to do was have my brushes all listed like this in groups. Uh, so I, I know how to do that for CS6 on a PC. It's a little different on a Mac. In CC, you can, I, I believe it's quite easy to create your own brush sets. And I highly recommend doing that because if you don't, when you, especially in CC, when you open up your brushes, you just have this slurry of brushes and it's so hard to find something. So if you can group them and you can keep your groups closed, 
except for the brush that you happen to be using, you can open that set up. It'll make using brushes a lot more, a lot easier and manageable. Uh, I'm not sure if I, I, I mean, you can make any, whatever categories you want. So I'm not sure if I've answered the question. Do I need to elaborate on that? No, that, that's really helpful. I have a question. Yes. Uh, today, I'm just really beginning at this, but I was um, using just a regular brush. Yes. And I had that big circle. Yes. And all of a sudden, I don't know what I did, the circle got replaced by four little lines with a space in the middle. And it was like I was drawing, like it just was making a line. So I went back in and tried to set my brush again, but it wouldn't. And eventually I exited out of Facebook and back in and I got the circle back. So I don't know what I did to get rid of the circle. Uh, yeah, I'd have to actually see it. Like I'm a yeah. pretty good, I'm pretty good at solving problems, but it's a lot easier if I can see what you're talking about. You just have to watch. You don't have to hit, you don't hit the cap, the cap caps on the keyboard. Oh, uh, maybe, maybe you, that's what happened. It will change how your brush looks. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so that's one thing to look at. Yeah. Thank you. you know, I, can I just give you all this is totally got nothing to do with brushes but i feel like i should say this because a lot of people don't know this and um if you go to file or uh, pardon me edit preferences general and click zoom with scroll wheel because i do all my scrolling with my mouse so I'm in and out with my mouse. It's so fast. And I don't ever use the whatever the tools are. I mean, I'd never use them. So I, I, I just always scroll with my scroll with my wheel. Uh, so that's just a little side tip. I know when I get new students here, the very first thing we do is we set up their scroll wheel. So it's edit, preferences, general, tick. Zoom with scroll wheel. Okay, any more questions? If there's no questions, well, I just I, excuse me. Uh, I have, I have one. Yes. Uh, how much do brushes cost to buy roughly? I mean, I'm sure there's a range, but uh, you, if you go into Brush Easy. A lot of they have many, many, many free sets of brushes. Okay. When I first started with brushes, I down I I went through a lot of their stuff and I downloaded a lot of their brushes. I don't use them anymore, but I that's where I started. Um, you can get pretty much anything, and there's some beautiful brushes on Brush Easy. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I don't have a question, but I think that what you're doing is absolutely beautiful. Oh, thank you. I had no idea I could use leaf brushes, so I'm incredibly inspired. Well, that's good. I mean, I, actually, if I just open up, um, this is a, a piece that I did recently, and I just want to show you on the right-hand side here uh, how extensively I use brushes. So every time you see, for instance, a mask down the right-hand side, I've brushed something in. So as I just scroll down quickly here, you see how often I use masks. I also have, um, I have folders set up here. So all the, oh, just let me, um, oh, I've turned the top part off here. So. If I open up this folder, which is the tree branches at the top and open that up, if I turn this off, that's all of these branches here that I've gotten rid of. They're in this folder here. I've opened up the folder and all of these trees here are photographs that I took myself and I've used a mask with every one to brush in the part of the tree that I wanted. 
-hmm. So I don't know, there's maybe 10 different layers here with different bits of trees brushed in. So as I click them on and off, you see them come and go. The fact that they're not necessarily all the same species of tree <laughs> doesn't really matter all that much. <laughs> um, so, and then in lots of these layers, I've just brushed, I've just painted. So if I go to here, I've got the top turned, the, my, my finishing turned off so we can see what I'm doing here. But if I turn off these eyeballs here, all the light has disappeared from the lights. When I turn them back on, they come on. So this is, this is just paint that I've applied with a brush into each of these layers, different blending modes, soft light, soft light, soft light, in order to build up the kind of light that I'm looking for. So not only am I using my brushes with masks, I'm using it to paint as well. Someone has asked, um, Jim has asked if uh, we could see the final image of that uh, tree image you showed earlier with oh, the houses in it or the buildings in it. Yes, um, you may. Let me just uh, turn off some of this stuff here. I've been, um, there it is there. I've, I've done this series of five trees. I'll show them to you quickly if you like. Uh, and I call them live in trees, not living, but live in trees. <laughs> so this one I call, here's the title over here, tree capitalized, tremendous in. Merrily, we're seeing you, not your screen. Pardon me? We are seeing you, not your screen. I'm uh -oh. seeing the screen. Oh, I'm I, seeing the screen. I, 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 I see your screen. screen. I see the screen, yeah. Yeah. It's all good. Okay. So I'll just turn these off quickly and you, I'll just make this a little bit bigger on here. I like the sidewalk to the <laughs> under second, the, tr the tree house, I guess it is. <laughs> yeah, this one I call travel tree in. And I, I took suitcases and put rooms inside of them, <laughs> added windows and rooms. So uh, it's mm -hmm. just kind of a whimsical, whimsical piece. Is the and, double, tree, double Tree Hotel chain after you? <laughs> this, one, um, this one is Antiqua Tree. <laughs> Uh, Marilee, Cindy is asking if, uh, what is the process for purchasing stock images that you can own in terms of collecting assets? Uh, if you go, well, you could take your own photos and I do as much of that as I possibly can. Probably most of what I do is my own photos, but not everything. Cause sometimes I can't find just that right thing. So you can go to Pixabay P-I-X-A-B-A-Y. It's a free site where people load up their photos. You can download and uh, there's no, like you have the, you are able to use them and, and sell them. So Pixabay, P-I-X-A-B-A-Y. And I think there's some other sites like that. I just don't know what they are. Um, I, I belong to, um, um, Sebastian Michael's group and we get quite a bit of content in there. There's lots of designers around um, that sell real that things made especially for um, compositing. Uh, one of them is called Os Scraps, O S C R A P S, Os Scraps. And another one is Escape and Scrap. They have lots of uh, content if you wish to purchase, but if you want them free, 
try Pixabay or other sites like that. Even some of the museums, uh, the Metropolitan Museum, I think, you can get, uh, use some of their things for nothing and full license as well. That's great. Merrily, we're going to have to end, unfortunately, yeah. given the time. Um, yes, I understand. There's a couple more questions. I don't know uh, if you could answer these quickly or... Okay, I'll try. Uh, one is, what program do you use to make your people look like drawings? To make them look like drawings? You probably don't use a particular program. There's no. filters you can use, or you can just kind of work with it yourself over and through Photoshop, is that what you do? Or? Yeah, pretty much everything is done in Photoshop. I, uh, I do have some plugins, but I have nothing exact specifically for drawings. Do you use textures mostly to create your backgrounds? Uh, textures, brushes, I use a lot of brushes in the background. If you look at this one here, these trees, um, the trees, let me just get into, one moment, I'll be quick. The trees here, can you see my cursor? Yeah. These are a photograph I took off my back step and made into a brush. So these trees in the background are a brush. Um, yeah, textures, photos, brushes, and just painting. Yeah, you've got text text in there too on the sides I can see on the top. Well, I'm sorry to end. This is a, just fascinating, but um, we do need to move on. So thank, well, thank you, you so much, Mary Lee. Thank you um, so much. You're most welcome. Incredible. I'm just going to stop Pleasure. the recording and we'll... Um,